grasslands. A treeless, windswept continent of grass, stretching from the broad Texas panhandle up through the mountain reaches of Montana to the Canadian border. A country of high winds and sun. High winds and sun. One of the very first explorers who was on the Southern Plains was a guy named Stephen Long. The first thing he says when he looks at these short grass prairies as far as the eye can see is, this country would be fairly easy to plant in Kentucky bluegrass. The first thought is, how can I take this place and turn it into something else? Starting in the 1870s and 1880s, the homesteading frontier really came to the Great Plains. This was the last part of the American West that anybody tried to homestead. The assumption was with the Louisiana Purchase and everything following that, that all open space would someday be diced up and given to farmers in 40-acre parcels. What you had for about a 50-year period was all of that wonderful short grass buffalo habitat plowed up and turned over and uh, planted in wheat. The country started out being de-buffaloed and then it got de-wolfed. The farmers made every effort they could to de-prairie dog the country and finally they pretty much de-grassed it and so they took a very old ecological setting and dismantle it. The result of all those changes meant that humans had sort of tripwired the whole Great Plains to fall apart as soon as the weather changed and it got drier. And so that's what we call the Dust Bowl. A third of the population leaves the region. And so all of that effort of dismantling that region and destroying the ecology of it, in a lot of ways, came for naught, ultimately. We define progress as people coming to live in a place. The train comes in, they build a white picket fence and the, the saloon and the church, and now it's good. Well, that's not necessarily progress. Progress is really coming to terms with the conditions nature lays out for us. It's completely necessary to do so. The land won't tolerate anything else. 